So today's lesson is all about driving. All about getting the ball into play successfully, taking longer shots, not wasting shots at the tee. When I often look at players' stats, what we want to see is obviously not wasted shots. It's arguably one of the most important areas of the game. It can be really frustrating if you're hitting the ball off the tee and hitting the trees, or not hitting it long enough to be able to get up in the par four and two. So today's video was going to cover all those things. So my favorite drills, exercises, explanations of how to drive the ball better. Some stuff on swing path, some stuff on how to hit the ball further, some stuff on how to set the ball better. There's four really great tips included in this video. Hope you enjoy it. And if you do, click like as you go along. Set up to the ball, as you probably would do normally. And you'll see here I've got a row of balls going back on an inward arc. Set the club in between the second and third ball, as we would look after the ball, post pre-ball here. That's the way I want your upper body to feel. Now keep your body in that box, as it were. Keep your body facing that way, directionally. And then put the club head back to the golf ball. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and hit the shot. Now. The only way I can hit the shot if I move one of the balls out the way. So I'd be here, move back, and then swing. Checkpoint number two would be the delivery position. So again, work to the top of the backswing, work it down as if we're going to hit the ball. So into our approach position here, our last parallel. And again, what we're looking for here really is the arrow to be pointing slightly towards the ground. Again, level or up in the air you'll see how the club face opens up we also want the tennis ball to be behind the hands again so the right wrist is into extension again if we start to get the right wrist more neutral the tennis ball comes out in front of the hands so the more we can get the feeling of the tennis ball situated behind the lead hand if we draw a line away and the tennis ball or the arrow on the tennis ball pointing down to the ground that would be ideal so the idea would be you practice swinging into the top, bringing it down, see the tennis ball towards the ground and see it behind your lead hand. That would be super if you could do that. So quite simply, I've got an alignment rod here with a bit of foam, a little bit of damaged foam, but a bit of foam just to protect the club head a little bit on the way down and obviously to make it a little bit more of a bigger barrier. The idea being if I come down and I swing the club over the top, I would hit this barrier. So it's what I'd call a constraint. It also is going to provide evidence. If I hit that stick or that foam, I'm going to know how my club was delivered on the way down every time. Vice versa, if I was from the inside too much, which is rarer, I could put it from the inside angle and do the same thing. So we're using it purely as a constraint and a form of measuring evidence to see how I'm delivering this golf club and to make me deliver the golf club consistently, ideally on a nice little circle, a nice little arc, to provide a straight golf shot and provide a neutral path and a good contact. So this is how we set it up. And I've got this set up so the foam is basically about half an inch outside the end of the golf club here and it's slightly off the ground. Obviously we can vary the amount off the ground. The higher off the ground the more it would interfere with the swing if I cheat and come over the top early and then straighten up at the end. So sometimes when things are low on the ground we get away with that. So this won't let us get away with that because this is far enough back. So I'm going to go ahead now and make a, make a shot and try and make sure I miss this orange stick. And then from there, we will talk about the cheat for the golf course. Looking at increasing your distance. And the science behind this is basically what we call spin loft. Now, what is spin loft? Spin loft is basically the differential between your angle of attack and the dynamic loft and impact. So if you imagine my fingers here, this is my dynamic, um, this is my angle of attack and this is my dynamic loft. If I squeeze these angles together, I hit the ball further. I lower that spin loft, lower that backspin and create basically a higher efficiency. So how we achieve that in simple terms is by hitting up on the ball more, getting the plane to take off and at the same time getting the shaft to lean forward to deloft the club. So I'm going to give you a couple of things to practice that are going to allow you to do that with ease. 
The first exercise is placing a head cover past your golf ball like so. And if you see here, it's just outside a club head width in front of where the ball would be. I've got the ball teed up just above the club face. So just a full ball above, above the, the driver head here. What I'm gonna do is try and attempt to pick the ball off the tee without disturbing the tee and miss the cover with my follow through. That's gonna ensure that my club is traveling up on the ball, ascending on the ball, and my low point of my swing would be before the ball. Another good thing to practice while we're about to attempt this is with your practice swings, try and get the feeling of the club bottoming out before the ball and then ascending up. These are gonna guarantee us hitting up on the ball, which is only half of what we're trying to do because we're also trying to deal off the club as well. But hitting up on the ball is the first part. Let's get that achieved consistently and then look to deal off the club. So if I take my setup as normal, ball position left heel, handle behind the ball as normal. So then I'm gonna try and feel I'm almost botting the club out here and then hitting up, picking the ball off sweetly and missing that cover. And as you can see there, I haven't disturbed the cover at all. The T-peg still fully intact, haven't broke it, and it hasn't moved. Now that's not the be all and end all, but it shows me that I'm not hitting down the ball. If I was crashing down on the ball, that T-peg would be flying everywhere. Obviously, if I bombed out and just caught it on the way up, I could also disturb the T-peg from that too. But it's a good sign to see that things are intact. Thanks for checking out my video on the driver and how we can improve the accuracy and the length and the consistency you get off the tee. Obviously for me, setting up to the ball correctly and then executing some of the things we've talked about within the video, some of the positions to control the club face, control the delivery, the path, and you know, get that angle of attack correct are vital to be a successful driver of the ball. If you have enjoyed it, please click like and share the video. Also, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, follow me on my journey. Let me help you improve your golf. And most importantly at this moment, I hope you're staying safe and enjoying the content to keep you going during this tough period. See you soon.